Now we've learned all about what happens when we react to carbonyl with either water or alcohol as the nucleophile. We go to hydrates, hemiacetals, or acetals. What we want to move on to now is talking about uh, carbonyl addition reactions where amines are the nucleophiles. So what happens in this case is mechanistically related, um, but the products are just slightly different. So in the case of the reaction of a carbonyl with an amine, uh, what we get to is this type of reaction product, which is called an imine. Right? So an imine. It's got a carbon-nitrogen double bond. Uh, now, depending on the uh, exact acidity of these uh, reaction conditions, there might be a related species that uh, actually forms. And it's simply just the protonated version of the imine. Okay, so it could be this, this cationic uh, version of the imine with the, the positive charge here. And this is just simply known as an aminium ion. Okay, as we'll see, an aminium ion is an intermediate to go to an imine. So um, you, you technically will access both of these in a mechanism. Um, but just depending on the acidity of the conditions, you, you might get the imine as the neutral form or the aminium as the, as the cationic form. Okay, so a couple of things to note here. Um, one is that this specific process to form an imine um, or the protonated imine um, only works if we've got uh, this type of amine, which is known as a, a primary amine. Primary amine, okay? And sometimes, it, sometimes you might write primary like that. Um, and this just means that there's only a single organic substituent on the nitrogen with, with two hydrogens. You have to have that in order to get to this intermediate. We'll talk about the, um, the situation where we have a different type of amine in just a little bit. Um, but a primary amine uh, reacts to give an imine or an aminium ion. Um, and the second thing I would like to note is that uh, as with acetal formation, as with hydrate formation, this is absolutely a reversible process. So you can take imines or aminium ions and hydrolyze them back to the carbonyl and to the amine. Well, this is a process that's actually very important, um, crucial, in fact, to biology. So a lot of enzymes will operate uh, by uh, um, reacting with substrates um, via these types of intermediates. So th this, is, this is very, very crucial to life. Um, so how does this work? Well, in many of the details, um, this is exactly analogous to what we've already seen in terms of hydrate formation, acetal formation. Okay, and basically the process just sort of stops early. Okay, so uh, the mechanism goes as follows. So we start off in the same way. We have our carbonyl, okay, and you note that we're under acidic conditions here. So we've got protons. So just as before, we're going to start off by protonating the carbonyl. Okay, so that gives us our oxocarbenium ion. Um, and then the nucleophile adds, right? So protonate and then add. So in this case, the amine is our nucleophile. So that's going to add to the carbonyl. We'll push the electrons up. Okay. And this gives us an intermediate that is positively charged at the nitrogen, right? Okay, and then we need to engage some base to deprotonate, right? So protonate, add, deprotonate, just like we saw before. And that's going to get us to the following intermediate. Okay, there we go. Now, this is uh, basically the exact same or analogous to the intermediate um, uh, that we call the hemiacetal, okay? Hemiacetal, the only difference here is that instead of the um, alkoxy uh, substituent, we have an amine. Um, and this is actually known as a hemiaminal, okay, a hemiaminal, all right? Um, and in certain cases, this is actually a stable intermediate. So there are certain molecules where this is actually the end point um, and, and it will exist in this form. But normally uh, things keep going, uh, just like with the, the hemiacetal formation. Under acidic conditions, things will keep going. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So in this case, we're going to 
react with proton further. Um, again, just like when we formed an acetal, so we're going to protonate uh, the, this hydroxyl group. Okay, that gives us our positive H2O. All right, and now this nitrogen has this uh, great lone pair on it. So we can use that lone pair to now kick off that positive water. Okay. And again, I'm just going to draw the, the nitrogen up um, just so that it looks a little bit more normal. All right, and if you notice here, this is actually the iminium ion minium ion okay so uh, all of this is falling exactly along with the acetal formation mechanism the only difference here is that we've got um, this minium ion intermediate instead of the oxocarbenium ion um, now in the case of the acetal formation what happened is another molecule of alcohol added to this oxocarbenium intermediate but in the case of the minium ion uh, we have this acidic proton um, so instead, what typically happens is that a base will deprotonate that aminium ion, and that actually then leads to the final product, the neutral imine. Okay, so there's, there's our final product. So uh, it, it's slightly different, but uh, honestly, everything is um, more or less exactly the same um, that, that you've already seen, and it's just that something slightly different happens at the end. Uh, but as I said, either of these things might be uh, the stable end product, depending on the conditions, um, or even the hemiaminal might also be a stable uh, product in certain cases. Okay. Um, one other thing that I might mention is that sometimes you will see imines uh, described as a shift base. Okay, it's shift base. It's a little bit of a classic term, uh, but now and again you will see it uh, referred in that way. Okay, and so just to just to uh, stress the point, then um, this typically typically does not keep going uh, in the, in the form or in the way that we saw with the the acetals, where you would go to the um, to to this type of thing where you have two nitrogens. Um, now again, in in very um, very special cases, these types of things can exist, and this is known as an aminal, okay? So aminal, hemiaminal, there and there. Uh, but normally we don't, we don't see those, so um, I, w I shouldn't cross it out, but we'll say that this is not, not typical, okay? So not typical. And for the most part, we're going to end off it in, in this, part of the, um, this part of the region, okay? Now, <clears throat> One thing that you might find a little, a little bit curious about um, this mechanism here um, is that we're requiring protons. So we have to protonate a carbonyl, for example, um, and as well as this hydroxyl group. So we have to do that for the activation like we've come to expect. And yet at the same time, we have amines around and amines are actually reasonably basic, right? So if you have an amine and you throw a proton at it, it's just going to protonate the nitrogen lone pair, and you'll get to um, a uh, you know, protonated amine. Okay, so that that's a bit of a, a problem, it would seem, because um, the by far the most basic thing in this flask is going to be the amine, uh, far far more basic than you would expect for a carbonyl. Um, so the question is exactly what is going on? Um, how how can this possibly exist? And the answer is that. Um, you, you basically, you need a very sort of special range of pH uh, for your system in order to get this to work. So um, imine, um, imine in an aminium ion formation um, is going to work best um, at a pH of, of about four to five. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter that you remember um, this value, but I'm just pointing out that it requires um, a medium that is uh, somewhat acidic but not too acidic. So basically what you you need uh, from um, the system is 
uh, you, you need enough proton H plus so that you can activate um, the, the carbonyl um, and, and the OH group and those intermediates, but um, you, you want not too much because otherwise you're going to cause this equilibrium here, the protonation of the imine or the amine, to be too far over to the right hand side, right? So if all of your amine is protonated and the uh, the medium is too acidic to allow any of the free amine to exist, you you basically won't have a nucleophile. So it's really a Goldilocks situation where you need not too much, not too little. You need just the right amount of proton. Okay, so again, it's not important for you to, to, un to know uh, how much proton, um, but that hopefully answers the question of, of how in the world you can have um, this requirement for both proton and base in the same mechanism. Okay, <clears throat> now um, let, me, uh, let me talk about what happens um, in the alternative case where we have uh, not a, um, a primary mean, but a secondary mean. So... I'm going to draw my, my carbonyl slightly different here um, with, with a, a methylene here. Um, but what happens if we have um, a nitrogen now, not with two, two hydrogens on it, um, but instead just one? So since there's two alkyl substituents here, this is a secondary amine. And things are, are slightly different here because you don't have the ability um, to, to go to the imine. Right, you, do, you won't have the ability to do, do that final deprotonation. Okay, so if I react a carbonyl um, and a secondary amine, uh, again, with a, a little bit of proton, sort of a magic bit of proton, um, there's two possible scenarios that can happen. Either I'm going to go to the aminium. This is also an aminium ion. Aminium, okay. Um, and that's that's one possibility. Uh, the only difference uh, between this aminium and what we saw before is that there isn't a proton, there isn't a protonated amine, but it's just a, a dialkyl aminium ion, okay? Um, or there's something else that can happen, which is we can actually deprotonate um, at this alpha position, and that actually leads to a neutral compound which looks like this. We formed a carbon-carbon double bond now with an amine hanging off. And this is a functionality called an enamine, right? So it's like an alkene amine or an amino substituted alkene, so enamine, right? So aminium ion goes to enamine. Um, and the requirement here is that you have to have um, uh, at least one or really, really probably two protons um, in this alpha position in order to get to the uh, enamine. If you don't have that, um, well, it's probably going to be hard to form the aminium ion, um, but you certainly wouldn't have the, the capacity to go to the, to the uh, enamine. So we don't have to walk through the mechanism um, completely uh, to, to show uh, how these intermediates form. Everything is exactly the same as we already saw up to the point of the aminium ion formation. Okay, so we go from, from here to and we have these protons, so we can we can do this first part of the mechanism to get to the aminium ion. Okay. And then what's going to happen is that a base is going to deprotonate, and then you're going to push those electrons in and up. And then that's going to reveal the enamine product. Okay, uh, and now we're we're going to talk a little bit more about the chemistry of of amines and aminium ions. We're actually going to save the chemistry of enamines for a little bit later, um, and the reason is because uh, these actually have uh, nucleophilic character at this alpha position. So we're going to save that chemistry for a little bit later. Um, but the thing to note now is that primary means can go to uh, imines and aminium ions, and secondary means will go to enamines. All right. 
So we'll talk uh, in the next video a little bit about uh, some of the specific uh, reactions that um, mini ions can undergo.